Hello, good evening. Yeah, welcome to our lecture on codits. We had discussed earlier about the uh, class mammalia, and we have said earlier that the mammals or the organisms in the class mammalia are endothermic amniotes that are distinguished from other uh, amniotes in that they possess three middle ear bones, they possess mammary glands, and they also possess a region of the brain that is called neocortex. Mammals are also known to possess hair as integumentary structures. And we had also classified mammals into three subclasses, the subclasses Protheria, the subclass Methatheria or Marsupiola, and the subclass um, Eutheria or Placentalia. And the two subclasses, Protheria and Metatheria or Mesopiela have been discussed. So today's lecture will now be on the subclass Placentalia. So Placentalia is also the subclass Placentalia is also called the subclass Eutheria. The placentalia consists of the placental mammals. Now, what are placental mammals? The placental mammals are mammals that possess a placenta. They are mammals that possess placenta to accommodate their embryo. Now, the placental mammals are mammals that are characterized by the possession of the placenta, which facilitates exchange of nutrients and wastes between the blood of the mother and that of the fetus in the uterus. We also want to look at the uh, classification of these placental mammals, mammals in the subclass placentalia or eutheria. Placental mammals belong to the others rodentia. The other rodentia consist of the rodents like the mice the, and other species of that class. Then we have the Tyroptera that has the bats, the Sarocomorpha that consists of the shrews and moles, the Euronexiomorpha which consists of the hedgehogs, the primates, which has the humans, apes, monkeys, and lemurs as examples. Then we also have the subclass Artiodictyla, which consists of the even toed hoofed, hoofed undulates. And we have the, sub, the other Perisodictyla, which consists of the odd toed hoofed undulates. The other Proposidia consists of the elephants. The other Tubuli dentata consists of the adfix, the other carnivora, some of the carnivorous mammals, like the cats, the dogs, the lions, cheetahs, leopards, and all of that. The, the other lagomorpha consists of the pickers and rabbits, the other consingulata consists of the Amadilos, the other pilosa consists of the ant eaters and slots, the other scandentia consists of the tree shrews, the other macrocylidia consists of the elephant shrews, serenia, other consists of the manatees and the uh, dugons, and we also have the other cetacea that consists of large mammals, the largest mammals and the largest organisms ever living now, the whales, as well as dolphins and porpoises. So having discussed that, we want to now look at the other rodentia, the other rodentia, which consists of the rodents. Now, what are rodents? Rodents are species of mammals that are characterized by upper and lower pairs of ever-growing rootless incisor teeth or chisel-like incisor teeth in which the upper and lower jaws in each of the upper and lower jaws that continue to grow throughout the animal's life. Now, this rodent species can be arboreal or fusorial. 
that is they can be found on top of trees and some are fusor uh, fusoria that's they are found burrowing into the soil and some are semi-aquatic this huge order of animals encompasses more than 2050 living species in 27 separate families including not only the true rats and mice but also such diverse groups as porcupines, beavers, squirrels, mammoths, pockets, gophers, and chindelas, chinchillas. Okay, now this is uh, a figure that's showing the various species of rodents. Here is a rat, and we also have the California ground squirrel, then we have the flying squirrel, and the Eastern chimp monk. All of these are examples of mammals in the order Rodantia, subclass Eutheria. Now, I want to also look at the second order. This order has a group of the only mammals that are capable of flight, the bats. Bats are the only group of mammals that are capable of flight. They possess elongated fingers, thin wing membrane, and are mostly nocturnal. The bats have elongated fingers, and the elongated fingers are connected by thin, fem mem thin wing membranes, which are used for flight. And these organisms are mostly nocturnal. Their eyes are small and inefficient, but their ears are usually well developed. They have very small eyes. And usually, even at night, they depend more on hearing to capture their prey than even with sight. That's one unique feature of the bats in the other Chiroptera. Terra. Nearly 1,000 species are currently recognized, and many are enormously abundant. Okay, they are nocturnal organisms. Most of them are insectivores. Okay, these are typical examples of bats that are uh, in the other Chiroptera, the only mammals that are capable of flight. Now, what distinguishes these bats from birds? They have hairs in their skin. They have teeth instead of beaks. They also have outer pinna, ears. And then they don't have feathers in their wings, but they have membranous wings. They are Wings are interconnected by elongated fingers. The membranes interconnect the elongated fingers, which helps them to, to fly, enables them to fly. So they depend mostly on their uh, sense of hearing to attack their prey or to chase their prey more than their sight. They have very poor eyesight and they are nocturnal organisms. The next other I want to look at is the other Serocomorpha, sorry, Comorpha, which consists of the shrews, the moles, and the kings. The other Serocomorpha consists of small mammals that usually live on the ground and have large forelimbs for digging. No external ears, they have minute eyes and dense velvety fur. Okay, the features, the distinctive features we want to look at is that they, are, they usually live on the ground and they have large forelimbs. They are, the forelimbs are very large and they enable them to dig into the soil and they do not have external ears, the pinna, and they have minute eyes and their fours are usually very dense. Shrews have a long, slim restroom small eyes and short ear pinna. Their ears, the ears of ear pinnas of shrews are usually very short. Their five-toed feet are unspecialized except for enlarged claws in semi-fusorial fusoria, species and fingers of stiff hair on semi-aquatic species. So these organisms have five feet toes as we have seen, but they are unspecialized. But there are some that have um, toes that are adapted for, for burrowing, the semi fossorial species, and those that are used for swimming. So the, the digits tend to be fused 
Now this is uh, a mold. Okay, look at the feet. Their feet are modified for digging into the ground. This one is uh, a fossorial species, and we have the shrew. These are typical examples of organisms in the suborder Cerecomorpha, the consisting of the shrews, the moles, and the kings. Now, here is another order of the uh, subclass Eutheria, and it is called the other Urinasiomorpha, which consists of the hedgehogs. Now, the hedgehogs are basically small animals that have a round body with several thousand short, smooth, stiff spines on the back and uh, a small pointed snout. Now, typical uh, distinctive features we want to look at is that they have a round body and they have several thousand short, smooth, stiff spines on the back and are on a very small pointed snout. They can roll themselves into a ball when attacked. The hedgehogs can roll themselves into a ball. Just you think it's a round ball. That's basically how adapted they are for defense against predators. Usually they are insectivores, they feed on insects. Now these are the Western European hedgehogs. Okay. You have spines at their backs which is an adaptation for defense against predators, pointed snouts, and can actually, they have rounded bodies. The next order I want to look at is the other primates. And the other primates consist of the humans like us, apes, monkeys, and lemurs. Now, these other primates when compared with body weight, the primate brain is larger than that of other terrestrial mammals. Whereas all other mammals have claws or hooves on their digit, only primates have flat nails. So that's one very distinctive feature of the mammals. Only mammals have flat fingernails. Others have uh, claws and have hooves instead of flat fingernails, but mammals have flat fingernails. Uh, sorry, the, the, the primates have flat fingernails, which, which distinguishes them from other mammals. The eyes of mammals, like it is with us, face forward in all primates. The eyes of the primates face forward. Our eyes are in front, not at the sides. Okay, that's one distinctive feature. So that the eyes visual fields overlap. They have a binocular vision. We, the primates, have a binocular vision. Our two eyes work together. The, the, the uh, visions, our field of vision, the field of vision of our eyes overlap. Our eyes are usually in front, just as uh, it is known. That's another distinctive feature of the primates. This uh, Mona monkey is a typical example of the primate having both eyes in front, okay? They have both eyes in front. So they tend to have a binocular view. Our eyes are not on the sides and we have flat fingernails in our digits, okay? Instead of claws, okay? That's what one thing that distinguishes us from other mammals. This uh, humans like us are also uh, primates. Okay, we belong to the species Homo sapiens. Homo sapiens. I want to look at the next other in the subclass Eutheria. The other I want to look at is the other Atiodactylia, which consists of the even toed hoofed undulates. The even toed hoofed undulates. The even toed Undulates, okay, it is also called the atiodactyla from the ancient Greek word atios, which means even, and another word dactylos, which means finger. So they have even 
fingers or toes. They are undulates or hoofed animals which bear weights equally, equally on two, that's an even number of the five toes. Their third and fourth toes are fused together. The third and fourth toes are actually fused together. The roughly 220 land-based even toed undulate species include the pigs, the hippopotamus, the camels, the deer, the giraffes, the antelopes, the sheep, the goats, and cattle. All of these organisms, all of these animals belong to the other Artiodactyla. The other Artiodactyla consists of the pigs, the hippopotamus, the hippopotamuses, the camels, the deer, the giraffes, the antelopes, the sheep, goats, and cattle. Now, here is a commonly known goat here in Nigeria, the West African dwarf goat, which uh, is called Capra hercus. It, also, it is also a hoofed undulate. It's in the order Artiodactyla. The next order I want to look at is the order Perisodactyla, which consists of the odd toed hoofed undulates. The odd toed hoofed undulates. Members of the order Perisodactyla are herbivorous mammals, characterized by the possession of either one or three hoofed toes on each hind foot. They have one or three hoofed toes on each hind foot. They include the horses, asses, and zebras, the tepers, and the rhinoceroses. Okay, typical examples are the horses, the asses, the zebras, the tapers, and the rhinoceroses. These are typical examples of the odd toed hoofed undulates in the order Perisodactyla. Perisodactyla. The horse, the zebra, the rhinoceroses, the terpers are typical examples of such organisms. The next order we want to look at is the order Proposidia which consists of the elephants. The other Proposidia include elephants and their extinct relatives such as mammoths and mastodons. Proposidians in general have many of the traits we associate with elephants such as trunk, which is an elongated host-like extension containing the nasal passages, the tusks, which is the enlarged second of our incisors and a relatively large size. So the proboscideans, the proboscideans are characterized by one, the possession of a, a trunk, the possession of a tusk, and a very large size. They tend to have a very large size. The, the head is large relative to the body size. The head of the elephant in the other proposidia is large relative to the body size. Now here is an African elephant, Lusodonta africana. Okay, look at the, the trunk, the long trunk, the tusk, and relatively large ears, and the head that's big, and the body being very big. Now we want to look at the other tubulidentata, which consists of the advic. Advax. Now, the advac, also called ant bear, is a stocky African mammal found south of the Sahara Desert in savanna and sub, sub arid areas. It is found in savanna and sub arid areas. The name advic, advic africanus, for at pig refers to its pig like face and burrowing habitats. The Arctic weighs up to 65 kilograms, that's 145 pounds, and measures up to 2.2 meters, that's 7.2 feet long, including the heavy 70 cm 
that's 24, 28 inch tail. The face is narrow with an elongated snout, much reduced eyes and ears up to 24 centimeters long. The four toes on the front foot, five on the hind foot are equipped with strong flattened nail-like hooves resembling spades. There is only one species of advert. Now the only one species of advert that's still existing is called the Arcticropus alpha. Okay, this is a typical species of this other. The next other one to look at is the other carnivora, which consists of the carnivores. The other carnivora includes 280 species of placental mammals. Carnivorans have teeth and claws adapted for catching and eating other animals. They have teeth and claws that are adapted for catching and eating other animals. Many of them hunt in packs and are social animals, giving them an advantage over larger prey. Now these are, uh, most carnivorous, uh, most carnivorans are terrestrial. They usually have strong, sharp claws, typically with five, but never fewer than four toes on each foot and well-developed prominent canine teeth, cheek teeth, that is premolars and uh, molars that generally have cutting edges. Examples of carnivorans include bears, cats, raccoons, weasels, dogs, and the, the likes. Okay, the cats and the bears include the polar bears, the grizzly bears, and many others. Then we have the cats, like the lions, the, the cheetahs, the leopards, and others, the raccoons, the weasels, dogs, like wolves, and the foxes, and even the domestic dogs we keep. All of them belong to this other carnivora. Now here are pictures of carnivorans, okay? We have the long, the the, the long-tailed whistle. Then this is a male lion, all of which are in the other carnivora in the subclass placent subclass placentalia or Eutheria, class mammalia. Now the next other is uh, the other lagomorpha, which consists of the pickers and the rabbits. The other lagomorpha is made up of relatively well-known rabbits and hares family Lepor Leporidia, and also the less frequently encountered pickers in the family of Cotinidia. Now we also have the rabbits. Rabbits and hares are character characteristically have long ears, a short tail, and strong hind lips that provide a pounding locomotion. Okay, so the distinctive features of these organisms is that one, they have very long ears. They also have a short tail and a strong hind limb. Their hind limbs are very strong and they are used for pounding, a pounding locomotion. In contrast, the smaller pickers have shorter rounded ears, no external tail and less well-developed hind limbs associated with this comfort locomotion that is common to these organisms. The other consists of 87 species in two families. Now these are uh, examples of the members of the other lagomorpha. Okay, the first one is the eastern cottontail rabbit. Then we also have the black-tailed jack rabbit. This is the black-tailed jack rabbit. Then we have also the mountain hare, okay, and the American pika, okay, mountain hare and the American pika. We want to look at another other, and the other is called the other singulata, which consists of the armadillos. These are armored 
mammals found mainly in tropical and subtropical regions of Central and South America. Most of the 20 species inhabit open areas such as grassland, but some also live in the forest. All armadillos possess a set of plates called carapace that cover much of the body, including the head, and in most species, the legs and tail. Now, the, species, the distinctive features is that they have a set of plates that are called carapace, and this set of plates cover much of the body, including the head, and in most species, the legs and the tail. The, in all but one species, the carapace is nearly hairless. The carapace is nearly hairless. The carapace is made of bony transverse bands covered with tough scales that are derived from skin tissue. Now here is the nine banded amadillo, okay, having a carapace that's covering the head and even the, the foot. So it's really an armored mammal. Now I want to look at the other pilosa, which consists of the ant eaters and slows. The other pilosa consists of the ant eaters and the slows. The other pilosa consists of nine species, which includes the ant eaters and slows in four families. Ant eaters are toothless. Ant eaters are toothless insect eating mammals found in tropical savannas and forests from South Mexico to Paraguay and northern Argentina. Now we also, they are long-tailed animals with elongated skulls and tubular muscles. The mouth opening of the muscle is small, but the salivary glands are large and secret sticky saliva onto the worm-like tongue, which can be as long as 60 centimeters, that's 24 inches, in a giant ant eater. The next is the slots of this other. Now the slots are tree dwelling mammal noted for its slowness of movement. All five living species are limited to lowland tropical forests of Southern and Central America where they can be found high in the forest canopy, sunning, resting or feeding on leaves. So they are usually heavy for us. Slots have long legs, stumpy tails, and rounded heads with inconspicuous ears. Now these are the, the two uh, organisms, the giant ant eaters, which have a very uh, uh, long muscle. And we also have the the slots, which are known to be slow moving animals, usually found in the forest canopy. We want to look at the next other, the other scandentia, which consists of the three shrews. These are species of small mammals resembling squirrels and true shrews. Three shrews, however, are neither rodents nor insectivores and differ from them to the extent that they constitute their own mammalian order. They have, they have large eyes, conspicuous ears, and large insectivores. Like insectivores, and they have a long muscle. Three shrews have slender bodies, long slender limbs, and sharp curved claws. Depending on the species, the tail is slightly shorter or much longer than the body. Three shrews have acute senses of hearing and smell along with a good vision. There are about 17 species in the other Scandantia in one family. Now here is a tree shrew in the genus to pair. Want to look at another order. The other is called the other Macrocylidia, which consists of the elephant shrews. These are rat-sized African mammals named for their long, tapered, and flexible snout, the proboscis. All 
have slim bodies, slender limbs, and very long hind legs and feet. Although they resemble shrews, they are not insectivores, but constitute the mammalian order Macrocylidia. Now these are pictures of the, the shrews. Okay, the pictures of the shrews. Now I want to look at the other serenia, which consists of the manatees and dogs. The serenia, commonly referred to as sea cows or serenians, are an other fully aquatic herbivorous mammals that inhabit swamps, rivers, estuaries, marine wetlands, and coastal marine waters. They are said to be uh, herbivore, aquatic, fully aquatic animals. They are found in uh, they are herbivorous animals and inhabit swamps, rivers, estuaries, marine wetlands, and coastal marine waters. The Serenia current, con, currently comprise the families Dugontia and, and uh, Digogidia, which consists of the Dugons. It also has the family Trichidia, which consists of the manatees, with a total of four species. The Protocerinidia, which consists of the Ocin Serenians, and the Prorastomidia, Pro which consists of terrestrial serenians in the fa uh, families which are extinct in this order. Now, here it's uh, a manatee that was caught in Nigeria around uh, in Bayasa, around maybe in maybe local government area. Now, I want to look at another uh, other, the other cetacea. The other that has the largest number, the largest sized organisms on Earth for now. This other consists of the whales, the dolphins, and porpoises. It consists of the whales, dolphins, and porpoises. These are entirely aquatic group of mammals, commonly known as whales, dolphins, and porpoises. The cetaceans breathe air. They give back to live young produce milk and have hair, all features of mammals. They have these features. They breathe air, they give back to live young ones, that's they are viviparous, they produce milk, and they also give back to young ones alive. Now here, exa typical examples is the sperm whale. You also have the ochre or the killer whale, then the common dolphin. All of these are in the other cetacea of the subclass Eutheria or Placentalia and the, the class Mammalia of Phylum Cordata. Here was uh, here's a picture for, of a whale that was caught around the former in Brass local government area of Bias State, Nigeria, being slaughtered by the indigents. You can see the normal size of the the will this is the blue will thank you very much for listening keep watching more videos in the future